Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are finally moving on to Neptune. After dealing with the dwarf planets as a group, we will now finish off our individual treatment of the planets of our solar system. So if you've been keeping up with my channel, then you know that I posted a video about each planet roughly once a month uh, over the past few months. We will, uh, this channel, I will continue to post videos about individual objects, but we are running out of planets. We're coming up to Neptune now, the most distant planet, the last planet left at the edge of the solar system. Luckily, there are plenty of other things to look at. So once we are done with Neptune, in future videos, we will look at the individual dwarf planets. And then, of course, we will go back and take another closer look at some of the planets in the sky. But this one is going to be a little bit different. Neptune really, really isn't visible to the naked eye. And no one's saying otherwise. Pretty much every other planet can be seen. Technically, Uranus is just about visible, although I've never managed to see it. You can certainly see Uranus as a sort of tealy blue dot in reasonably low power magnification, even with a big pair of binoculars. Uh, Uranus is around over there. Looking at the sky from the city, of course, we're not going to see much extra. If we pull out into the countryside, that will bring Uranus into view, or it should, but it won't do so for Neptune. So there is Uranus on the line with Mars, uh, Jupiter and Saturn there. We need to look a lot closer to Saturn just over here. This is a good enough time of the month to do it too. The moon isn't going to be interfering. So here in early August, we should get some of the best opportunities to see Neptune. It's there reasonably close to Saturn. So at least we have this kind of signpost in the sky. It's near Saturn and Saturn is easily visible to the naked eye, even in the city. Neptune isn't visible to the naked eye. So it was discovered using telescopes, but not, uh, not initially. The first hints people got that Neptune might exist was thanks to Uranus. Uranus's orbit around the sun didn't match up with what the maths predicted. There was some influence on Uranus's orbit. And that's what prompted people to look for Neptune. That's what prompted astronomers to go looking for Neptune because Uranus's orbit had these odd things going on, which indicated that there should be another planet out there. Um, it was maths that first, oh. <laughs> pointed to the location of Neptune, a mathematician, an astronomer doing maths, a bit of a mathematician as well, figured out roughly where this should be. Uh, but we can see here it was discovered 23rd of September 1846 uh, by an astronomer named Gall. That astronomer was working off the mathematical predictions of another scientist. There was a lot of collaboration in astronomy, and indeed there is still plenty of collaboration in science today. But in the sort of golden age of telescopic astronomy back in the 1800s, a lot of these astronomers were writing letters to each other, sharing their research directly with each other, not just publishing it and leaving it out there for other people to discover, but actively sharing it with their community, which of course it led to these kinds of discoveries. Now we can see it there under Gall. Uh, there's another astronomer, Le Verrier, a French astronomer who was not as well very soon after Neptune's discovery. And I believe it is measured in days. Yeah, there we go. October 1846 compared to September 1846. That's the 23rd. And I've got something on my uh, on my screen that's blocking out the date here. But I know it's reasonably early October. It is only uh, a few weeks of a difference. Because Triton is so large and so, so bright. Uh, Triton is an icy moon. I did a video recently about icy moons, but uh, Triton is one. It is a moon with this coating of ice, making it very, very pale, very reflective, very, very cold. Only a few tens of degrees above absolute zero on the surface of Triton. Triton is a big moon. Uh, it's 95% of the mass of all of the moons going around uh, Neptune. So if you added together all of these smaller moons, they'd be 5% and Triton would be the other 95 out of the things orbiting Neptune. Because Triton is so large, it is one of the big moons. It's counted similar to the Galilean moons, uh, Titan orbiting Saturn, these are larger moons that are big enough to be round. Uh, in the cases of moons like Ganymede, big enough to be counted as planets if they were orbiting the sun on their own. Triton is one of those very, very big moons, but it's going around Neptune in uh, the wrong direction. So going day by day here, it might not be very obvious, but I can uh, 
pull a few tricks here to make it a little bit clearer, or at least I should be able to. There we go. Um, so we can see all of those moons going around Neptune in the direction we'd expect, and then Triton actually going the opposite way. Triton is orbiting Neptune retrograde. It orbits Neptune on a retrograde path. So it's orbiting in the opposite direction to what we might expect. This has led scientists to conclude that Triton might actually be a dwarf planet, similar to Pluto, similar to the other dwarf planets we looked at recently, and that it was captured by Neptune rather than forming around the planet or forming in the inner solar system and then being captured by the planet. It looks like Neptune captured a dwarf planet and made it one of its moons. So it's a nice uh, link between the dwarf planets and the full planets. In fact, a lot of the dwarf planets were discovered because of changes in Neptune's orbit. For the same reason that astronomers looked for Neptune, because of strange, unexplainable things about Uranus's orbit, people started looking for the ninth planet or the tenth planet as it eventually became and then back to the ninth planet uh, people started looking for another planet beyond neptune because of certain unexplainable things about neptune's orbit and we haven't found it we haven't found a very large object out past neptune we have only found smaller objects we can see here some of the moons these moons are named after creatures from um the classical mythology they are named after um spirits and creatures of the sea that were associated with neptune the god of the sea uh, the roman equivalent to the greek poseidon uh, we can see naiad there thalassa which gives its name to um thalassophobia a fear of the open ocean proteus there as well there is another small moon orbiting neptune called hippocamp uh, of course Cap capricornus is a sort of hippocamp so there's some nice connections there if we pull back, that's forward. If we pull back, or in fact that, yeah, if we go forward rather than pulling back, we can see the great blue spot or the dark blue spot there in the upper atmosphere of Neptune. It is a nice giant. So again, we're talking about upper atmosphere here. There's no real surface, uh, just a liquid metallic hydrogen ocean uh, deep under here. This storm is similar to the great red spot on Jupiter. It is a massive storm in the upper atmosphere of the planet. Very, very high wind speeds, way bigger than any storm on Earth, of course. Neptune, as well as Uranus, um, their magnetic fields are a little bit tilted they don't line up perfectly with the actual motion of the planet which has led scientists to conclude that there is some separation uh, that the liquid hydrogen can kind of spin around more freely and there's probably not much friction when everything's being lubricated by liquid hydrogen and liquid helium there is a lot of methane of course in neptune's upper atmosphere as well that's what gives it this lovely blue color along with uranus but in all honesty it's not this lovely blue color it's not this rich almost royal blue or a, a kind of a bright sky blue it is a paler more washed out bluey teal color as we now understand it neptune and uranus are actually much much more similar in color than we originally believed uh, early images from voyager of course they had to be processed in certain ways and they were uh, it was difficult to make sure that we were seeing the color as we expected there's nereid there nereid is a smaller moon of neptune and it's a very interesting moon it's the second biggest, but it's still a lot smaller than uh, than Triton. Nereid's an interesting moon because it has a highly eccentric orbit. Uh, it's almost like the orbit of a comet. Not quite as eccentric as that, but it does change its distance from Neptune pretty drastically between its closest and its furthest point. Uh, it's about seven times further away at its furthest than it is at its closest. So that is a very um, interesting moon to take a look at. Neptune is almost unobservable uh even with quite a powerful telescope you can see here if i can get things lined up right without time moving things away from me i may be able to demonstrate but um jupiter's moons certainly the galilean moons are brighter and easier to see through a telescope than this planet this planet is just so incredibly incredibly distant uh, even a dwarf planet like ceres is easier to see through a telescope or binoculars than this blue dot we're definitely seeing a distinct blue color there we're not quite getting the moons of Saturn. I was hoping that I would be able to show the moons of Saturn and Neptune together, but it's not quite working. You'd need a very big field of view at the moment. Of course, those planets can end up closer to being in line with each other at other times, and hopefully that's something we'll get to investigate in the near future. But that is Neptune. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about ice giants, you can go back to my recent video describing the difference between ice giants like Uranus and Neptune and Saturn and Jupiter. That talks a lot more about the composition of these planets. But Neptune is out there, a planet that we only discovered thanks to math, thanks to people paying careful attention to the orbit of Uranus and calculating 
where the body perturbing Uranus's orbit should have been. And that's what led us to Neptune. And hopefully I have now led you to Neptune just up here by Saturn for you to take a look at over the course of the month of August. So I hope you get a chance to see it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like it. And if you'd like to see more from my channel, you can help by subscribing to this YouTube channel. If you'd like to read a little bit of this information, you can also take a look at my website, queenbeanscontent.ie. And hopefully I'll see you back here next time.